When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. And he took me with him. Hey, everybody. This is the first in a series of videos I'll be doing covering the responses to my 11 questions Flat Earthers are afraid to answer video, which is this video here. I expressed a few points in that video. One was that if Flat Earthers want their idea of a flat Earth and an Earth-centered universe to supplant the current models, they have to be able to, one, answer all of the questions that the accepted models can currently answer, two, answer them to a greater degree than the current models can, and three, answer questions the current models cannot answer. Another point that I made was that Flat Earthers prefer to ask questions about and criticize the accepted models rather than answer questions about their own ideas. And the vast majority of you did your best to prove me correct. At the time of my writing this, the video has some 8,000 comments, and of those 8,000 comments, only 30 of them answered my first question. In my video, I show this time lapse of the transit of Venus I made with my own camera as an example of Venus being seen to cross between us and the sun just a few years ago. My first question was, where is Venus right now? With a sub-question of, where is Mercury right now? And even though a whopping 30 people answered my question, I didn't get a consistent answer. I got variations of 18 different answers. And here's the deal. If you ask a group what their answer to a specific question is, and they give you 18 different answers, that means they don't have an answer. So many responses I got to that video were from people saying, these answers are basic, you need to do more research. But when Flat Earth supporters, people who claim to have done research that has changed their mind about the shape of the planet, can't give consistent answers, what do you think I found in my research? Inconsistent answers. Now the answers I got to my Venus question fall into some general categories and I will discuss them by category. Let's go. This is about Earth, not about Venus. Venus has nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. Why are you asking this question? Stupid question. And this goes to my first point. Your flat Earth system needs to account for everything the globe and the solar system model accounts for, if you want to replace it. If you have broad categories of things that your system doesn't account for and your response is, well, that doesn't matter, then you're not actually interested in science. What does Venus have to do with the shape of the Earth? Well, in this case, it has to do with the distance of the sun. Were any of you aware that during the transit of Venus in 1769, scientists coordinated efforts in over a dozen locations around the world to observe the transit and measure the parallax of the sun? Their measurements got up to about 3% of what we know today. So yes, knowing where Venus is can be a tad bit important to your model. And that leads to some of these other non-answers. No one actually understands what they are and how they move. Basically, what we know about Venus has been spoon-fed us through the solar system model. So any presupposition of the flat Earth calls everything about the solar system into question, including where is Venus right now? They're in the sky. I do not know where Mercury and Venus are right now. I do not know that any circles in the sky are globes, only round circular objects. I do know that everything was created by God. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know. There will always be things we don't know. But these responses are dismissive and intellectually incurious. They don't know and they don't want to know. And in my opinion, if you hold a worldview and that worldview is telling you to be satisfied with not having answers, that worldview is doing you a disservice. Next up, we have the planets don't exist category of answers. Flat Earthers answered, Don't talk about fake Venus. Planets don't exist. Planets are not physical objects. Planets are points of light etched into a glass dome or a layered glass dome. Planets are just lights. They may be atmospheric phenomena, holographic projections, a projection onto the dome. 
Someone said that this object here wasn't Venus. It was a sunspot. A sunspot whose appearance and path was predicted decades in advance? Right. Another response was that digital telescopes have fake images preloaded into them, and somehow this is supposed to explain my video, which was not taken with a digital telescope, just a regular camcorder. And then there's the this is not Venus category of responses. I guess you haven't heard Venus has disappeared. That can't be Venus because Venus shouldn't be visible at night because it's near the sun. But my video has it very near the sun. And then we have Mercury and Venus are objects of the unknown. Are these objects we call Mercury and Venus actually Mercury and Venus? I don't know. But through a telescope, they look like orbs radiating sound waves. Okay. That could be Jupiter or Mars. How do we know that's not a satellite? But people, even if this wasn't Venus, that's not addressing my question. Anyway, the category that got the most consistent responses was the planets are stars category. Let's go. Venus is a star. Book of Enoch. Venus is a star. Mercury is a star. All the stars that are going around in irregular patterns are wandering stars. This one made it an excuse for not being able to answer the question. There are fixed stars and wandering stars, and when something is wandering, that means it's unknown. Mercury and Venus are wandering stars. They are fixed in the firmament and move across the sky. Which contradicts this one that says, Mercury and Venus are closer than the sun inside the firmament. Rotational patterns put it where you could record it. Now, did you notice the one thing in common with all of those various responses? None of them tried to answer the actual question. Well, except this one, Rudes 80, that said, if the case is, in fact, there is a dome, is it possible that Venus has traveled to the outer edge and thus is being rendered invisible due to this effect? In other words, they recognized the point I was making with this question. In the standard flat Earth scenario, everything is within the domed system or firmament or whatever you want to call it, but there's no deep outer space. It's all here. Venus should be in here somewhere, be it etched in the dome, projected on the dome, on a layer of a multi-layer dome, or wandering around inside with us. It should be visible somewhere by someone at all times. There's no place for it to hide. And since this person didn't know where it was and where it could be without being visible, they speculated that Venus could be outside the dome. Good for them. But none of you thought to think about what we know about Venus. It's known as a morning star, sometimes an evening star. But whenever it's seen, it's somewhere in the direction of the sun, within a, a certain number of degrees. Not one of you thought, well, it's a wandering star. We see it near the sun all the time. Hey Jerry, Venus is at a position near the sun right now that we can't see it, or its brightness is blended with the sun's brightness. Nope, you didn't try to answer. You didn't think about it. You just made excuses. Why? I think it's because your worldview doesn't encourage you to pursue what you don't know. It makes you satisfied with ignorance. But hey, where are Mercury and Venus right now according to the current model of the solar system? Well, the current model knows the orbital paths and timing of all the planets. Back in June of 2012, Venus was here relative to the Earth and I recorded the transit. Moving forward, we can stop in May of 2016 and you can see where Mercury was in transit. Coming forward to today, we get a sense of where the two planets are now. Mercury is just west of the sun and Venus is just east, making it an evening star and Mercury is more of a morning star. On a particularly clear morning or evening, they should be visible. You should go out and confirm for yourselves. Now, sadly, it's too overcast tonight to see Venus. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the current solar system model says that Venus is right there. That's my job! That's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on my
last night's victory.